for a lot of the model kits that you buy, you just get the models and little else. But Games Workshop sells quite a lot of stuff that gives you quite a lot of interesting bits and spares, cool things to customise your miniatures, maybe some ways that you can get a bit more value out of some of the other models. Today we'll be talking about those kits for every faction in 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where we're doing a video idea that was given to me quite a while back by someone on the Discord server, but has been quite good fun to look into now I've had some time. We're going to briefly brush through each faction in 40k, talk about some of the kits that I think give you the most value in terms of spare parts and fun components that you might be able to use elsewhere, maybe ones that might be fairly good to acquire fairly early if you're starting the army, and maybe just talk about a few ways how we might be able to kit bash or convert other miniatures if you want to save a little bit of money when assembling an army. Of course, while I have collected and played quite a few 40k armies in my time, I can't say I'm an expert on all of them, and if there's any other handy tricks or hints that you know for your given faction, please let us all know down in the comments. If there's any particularly valuable spares that you really like, or a few life hacks to be able to get more models out of a kit, they're the sort of things that I'd really like to hear about. First off, we'll start with the Space Marines and their chapters, where I perhaps think that some of the biggest value kits are for the various veterans, the Vanguard veterans, Stone Guard veterans, and maybe even some Devastator squads as well. If you just want an entire host of power weapons and storm shields and things, the Vanguard veteran kit is a really good buy. You can see some of the options here, you get a bunch of different lightning claws, four thunder hammers, and plenty of storm shields and jump packs and things. Most of them really quite interesting parts, and looking a bit more ornate than the standard things that Space Marines carry into battle. Can be a helpful one for equipping sergeants, or maybe even personalising captains. The Stone Guard are kind of the ranged equivalent of this, some really fancy bolters, and a really good number of combi weapons, special weapons, and even some interesting heavy weapons. Again alongside some nice robed bodies, various choices of very fancy heads, and lots of blingy shoulder pads to scatter in throughout your forces. Even if you assemble four squads of the Vanguard and Stone Guard Marines, you're still going to have quite a lot of cool parts left over. Devastators will be another pick for me, basically for the same reason. If you want a ton of heavy weapons, Devastators are the place to go. And the extra ones that you get mean that you can potentially get even more Devastators out of the kit, say if you combine it with a Tactical Marine box. One thing that struck me for the Devastator box as well was that the Sergeant options are actually quite generous too. You do get a fair amount of close combat gear included here, including a lightning claw, thunder hammer, a power sword, and a few other bits. Finally, I'd also like to mention the plastic jump packs that Games Workshop sells directly. You can get five of those for a fairly reasonable price, can be a useful option for firstborn characters, who often really want the extra mobility or power to deep strike. In general, I find most of the Primaris kits just aren't quite on the same level. I think perhaps at least partly deliberately, Games Workshop have made the Primaris Marines not very customisable between different squads. Most of them tend to have parts that are only usable on the squad that you've got, different variants of the say the same bolters or plasma weapons on the intercessors and hellblasters. Otherwise, for getting some bits and bling for various specific chapters, Space Marines are far better covered than any other faction in the game, at least in terms of plastic things from Gamers Workshop. You've got the option of the Primaris upgrade sprues, typically consisting of a bunch of shoulder pads, maybe a special weapon or two, and a few head swaps. While they are pretty cool, and some of them appear in various Battle Force boxes, I must admit I don't particularly like the amount that you have to pay for these if you did want to have enough shoulder pads to say do your entire army. For example, if you wanted a bunch of Iron Hands intercessors and you wanted their chapter insignia, you'd be shelling out an extra £15 or $25 US dollars per squad, which would be halfway towards buying another box of intercessors or something else. I will say though that out of the upgrade sprues for Space Marines, the Black Templar one is absolutely great. It doesn't really cost all that much more than the Primaris upgrade sprues, but you just get so much more value out of it. It's £20 or $33, US dollars, and I believe that you get two sets of all that you see here. So compared with the slightly anemic Primaris upgrade sprue frames, you get a crazy amount of shoulder pads, unique weapons, and all manner of insignia and bling. Sure, it is a bit of an older sprue, but for the sheer amount of stuff that you get, it beats out a lot of the more recent ones. The Dark Angels have a fair few options, and their standard Dark Angels veteran squad is pretty handy for firstborn armies. It contains a lot of interest in Dark Angels bits, and including plenty of robed bodies which can be quite good for character conversions. Combine a few of those robed bodies and maybe hoods for the librarians, find the blingiest backpacks and fanciest gear in your collection, and you should be good to go for some cheap characters. They've got a pretty good Deathwing Terminator sprue as well, as you can see on the right side of this picture. The Deathwing Knight slash Command Squad box gives you plenty of unique gear. 
And there's also this Ravenwing accessory pack as well. Again, I think it's at least fairly generous compared with some of the more recent sprues. The classic Ravenwing bike banners and the winged cowlings. A bunch of purity seals and tons of iconography. And bits to allow you to make a Talon Master out of a regular land speeder as well. For the Space Wolves, perhaps my favourite is the Space Wolves Wolf Pack. This is the one that builds you either the Grey Hunters or the Blood Claws. And the options are pretty generous here. Plenty of Space Wolf Chainswords. Lots of snazzy combat weapons to equip the Wolf Guard with, which could certainly be used in other places. And a decent amount of head and shoulder pad options. You could definitely stretch one of these kits pretty far and give quite a lot of your models throughout the army a Space Wolf vibe. For the Blood Angels, I'm quite a fan of the Death Company kit. Again, loads of nice themed backpack options, and similar to the Vanguard veterans, they've got a decent amount of power weapons, and even some Blood Angels themed bolters and jump packs and backpacks, seeing as there's quite a lot of ways that you could potentially fill Death Company in-game. A few of the bits are maybe a little bit more obviously Death Company, with those cross symbols on them, but to be honest, even those, if they're just painted up in standard colours, wouldn't particularly suggest Death Company to me. And they're a great choice for kit bashing some Blood Angels Vanguard vets, or even just sprinkling these bits in and around the chapter. Death Watch, of course, don't have many kits, but at least their standard Death Watch kill team box is overflowing with options. And again, like many of the choices here, is one that however you equip the miniatures, you're going to be left with a whole load of themed Death Watch parts that you can use on other models. Unique heads, melee weapons, combi weapons, and all sorts of other good stuff. Again, definitely one that you could consider combining with something like a Tactical Marines box and get all the unique options in play over a few more marine bodies. Moving on from Space Marines, naturally the pickings are a little bit slimmer for virtually any other army in the game, though the guard have a fair amount of interesting stuff going on, just because their range is a fairly old one. For some interesting parts, the Cadian and Kastchan Command Squad boxes can be quite interesting, and as well as the squads itself, they should leave you with a few interesting bits left over to add a bit more character to the rank and file. Maybe they're a little bit less relevant for Cadians right now, seeing as they get the special weapons and things included in their standard kit, but the Command Squad box will still be a great help to Kastachan armies. I think the Guard Heavy Weapon teams are of particular note. Each Heavy Weapon team contains all the options that you have to offer. Auto Cannons, Las Cannons, Mortars, Heavy Bolters and Missile Launchers. They're really quite an easy kit to stretch as it goes. Just buy another big 60mm base online, combined with an extra Guardsman or two and you should be able to easily make two heavy weapon teams from each box, and potentially even more if you're willing to build a few more supports for them with things like plastic rod or plastic art. If you're playing Cadians and you want to get some more heavy weapon teams, I'd strongly consider the Gene Steeler Cult Brood Brothers box. It basically gives you a squad of Cadians, a heavy weapon team frame, and also the extra Gene Steeler Cult heads option, which you don't have to use if you don't want to. If you're not really all that bothered about the extra special weapon and heads frame that they recently put into the Cadians box, this could be an interesting option. Since they jacked up the price of Cadians, this is actually cheaper than the standard Cadian box, contains a heavy weapon team, and there's even the potential to resell the Gene Stealer head sprue if you don't want it. If you want a few more bits for vehicles, they do also sell a separate tank accessory frame if you want things like track guards or dozer blades on your tanks. I guess they could theoretically be handy if you're hurting for some of these parts. And I would also bear in mind that for Imperial Guard regiments, Third parties make an absolute ton of bits that you can customise the miniatures and make them feel a bit different. Websites like Anvil Industries or Victoria Miniatures provide quite a lot of different heads. Quite relevant now Games Workshop stopped making the individual regiments in metal. To be honest, for quite a lot of the other Imperial factions, the pickings are just a little bit thinner. Most of these armies are at least relatively new and haven't had all that much chance to acquire random extra upgrade sprues as Games Workshop has many just focused on bringing out actual new units for the armies. I think also with newer ranges, Games Workshop does tend to try and focus on making all the models quite individual, so there's a bit less chopping and changing and using the same models for different purposes. In my mind, a lot of the best parts tend to come from the standard troops boxes of the armies, as they're some of the most flexible and customizable models meaning that you're likely to have a fair few special weapons or things left over, maybe bits that you could potentially use elsewhere. For the Admech, the standard Rangers and Vanguard are a reasonably good bet. Whichever one you build, you're going to have the alternate parts left over, and you can save any special weapon bits just in case the rules change a bit, and you might want to deploy them en masse in the future. The Adeptus Custodies are quite fortunate with their Custodian Guard box. As it goes, it's relatively good value from Games Workshop, £35 or $60, 
and you could literally just take boxes and boxes of these and make an entire custodia's army if you want to. As well as obviously making the standard guards, you get the parts to make a shield captain and a vexilla as well. And you'll either be left with a few more guardian spears or storm shields, depending on how you equip them. For the Sister of Battle, the Battle Sister Squad does seem to be the most generous kit for extra bits, and it is the one that doubles up to allow you to field Dominion Squads and Celestians. So it has the standard special weapons, the Simulacrum Imperialis, and a few combat weapons and blingy bits to put on the Sister Superior. I think you could certainly get away with kit bashing a few of the character models from this kit if you wanted, just using the fanciest bits to represent Canonesses, Palatines, or maybe even some of the elite support characters. Imperial Knights, of course, don't really have all that many kits to choose from. You've just got the Dominus, Questoris, and Armagers. The Questoris Knights do seem to give you the best options, and I'd thoroughly recommend saving their extra guns or magnetising to better equip the big stompy warsuits into the future. Finally, returning to the Space Marines with the Grey Knights. Again, they're a faction without too many kits of their own, though again, the Strike Squads and Terminator Squads have quite a lot of different weapon options and should leave you with a fair few force weapons and other bits left over when you assemble the units. Moving on to the Forces of Chaos now, and the fairly recently redone Chaos Marine kit does offer a decent amount of options, with some good flexibility for ranged and melee options, and a decent number and choice of heads and shoulder pads. They certainly seem like a good kit for combining with maybe some of the older Chaos Marine range, maybe to make units like Corn Berserkers just a little bit more intimidating, with some recently sculpted parts in addition to their standard ones. As with Devastators, Havocs can be a decent choice for heavy weapons, and the Dual Raptors Warp Talon kit could be a good way to acquire a fair few Lightning Claws, which are quite a strong option on Terminators at the moment. Spawn are a fairly good option for acquiring a whole load of random bits. If you want a bit more of a mutated or possessed feel to your Chaos Space Marine Warband, then after you've assembled a couple of these guys, you should have plenty more spare parts to customise the rest of the forces. They're also a bit of a kit that could be stretched potentially as well. If you're handy with some green stuff, enough to be able to build a central body for a third one, you should be able to get three models out of the kit. I wouldn't rule out the possibility of going with some standard Space Marine bits as well. Again, if you just want a bunch of power weapons, Vanguard veterans aren't a terrible way to go. Mixed in with Chaos parts, they should be fairly innocuous, and most of the time it's not too hard to remove outstanding Imperial insignia. For the Night Lords in particular, Games Workshop does make an upgrade sprue for them, though it is a bit of an old and dated one, and not really on the same sort of level as the newer Primaris ones. Could be an option for Night Lords players, but it's not the most finely detailed kit in the world, and you might be better off with something from Forge World in comparison. Speaking of which, both the standard Chaos Space Marines, and also Thousand Sons and Death Guard, Chaos Space Marines, and indeed Loyalist Space Marines have it quite lucky, as if you are willing to shell out the resin tax for Forge World, you can get some really quite nice bespoke models. Most legions have their own unique shoulder pads and terminator sculpts. There's plenty of unique sculpts of Relic Contemptors, and the Legion Praetors can make for some wonderfully themed characters such as Chaos Lords or even Space Marine Captains. And for Chaos Marines in particular, some of the older armour marks can fit in right at home within the army, such as these Mark III Iron Armoured Space Marines which are also available as a plastic kit from Games Workshop as well. For Death Guard and Thousand Sons, it's largely a fairly similar story. Just like some of the other more recently sculpted armies, their core kits in the Plague Marines and Rupert Marines, and their unique Terminators maybe provide the best options for getting a bunch of random parts. Again, they can both make good use of some of the bits from the Horus Heresy range. Chaos Demon kits can often be a little bit sparse, Maybe not really very many options aside from the models that you're actually just going to clip out and play, but perhaps one that I think deserves special mention is the Burning Chariot of Zinch, just because of how flexible the kit can be. You could potentially make it into a Herald with a disc, two Screamers to help fill out a rank of those models, and maybe use the Blue Horrors on their own. Or when I had a go with this kit once, I made the Blue Horrors into a Blue Scribes conversion just to get another character into the army. Even on top of all that, you'd still be left off with an Exalted Flamer that you could field all by itself, and as value for money for Demon Kits go, I think that this is one of the best. Quite nice that it's also included in that Start Collecting Demons of Zinch box. Moving on to the Craft Worlds, and again maybe bits of a touch limited, a lot of the models don't really have all that many spare parts on their sprues. I think going with the whole Space Elf vibe though, you can potentially look outside of the Craft World range, and maybe use some parts from Fantasy Elves, such as this Eternal Guard from Age of Sigmar here. I've used those snazzy spears and shields to make a kit-bashed unit of Shining Spears before, 
And that banner was quite fun to add onto a jet bike as well. I think the fantasy weapons don't really look all that out of place alongside the Eldar range, as they do grow quite a lot of their stuff out of Wraithbone, and a lot of things tend to look quite organic anyway. Potentially there could be some scope for converting some of the resin aspects out of kits such as Dire Avengers too. This would really make them look appropriate, you might be looking at things like third party bits, though I have seen some people make some decent conversions with things like Eldar missile launchers to represent Dark Reapers. For the Drakari, again, a lot of their kits don't seem to provide all that many extra bits. You should get a fair amount from the standard Warriors and Witches though, which I guess most Drakari forces will acquire at some point or another anyway. I think Drakari do have a fair few options that are quite good for using stand-in from other ranges though, particularly the Beasts. You could think about some other fantasy kits to represent things like Chimeri. Maybe some Kitbash Fenrisian Wolves like these here wouldn't look too bad at all running alongside some Beastmasters on Skyboards. Grotesques are a bit of a shame for the Dark Eldar army as well. They're really quite expensive for the single monopose resin model that you get. And I've seen a fair few people make use of some Storm Vermin from Age of Sigmar Skaven. Remove some of the more obviously ratty parts of them and maybe combine them with some bits of Talos. And they can look really quite appropriate. They've got a good balance of armour and flesh going on, much like the actual Grotesque kit has. Not having to work in resin is just an added bonus. Raiders and Ravagers have a little bit of conversion and mixing it up potential. If I was getting them, I'd certainly look at finding a way to magnetise between the two, taking those side sponsons on and off, depending on whether you want to fill them as Raiders or Ravagers in-game. Plus the kits have a fair few interesting crewmen and a few other details that you could save to use later. Finally, Venoms come with a few extra witches that are supposed to be mounted on the wings of the skimmer. In reality, I'm not sure I've ever seen anyone assemble the Venoms with these on. If you can just find a few spare bases, they can be used as witches all in their own right. Add a few more models into the squad, and to be honest, I think that the Venom looks better without them. When they're modelled on as well, it kind of implies that the Venom always has the transport capacity full, even when it might be an empty one because the squad's got out. Finally, for Harlequins, they're really limited on options. The standard troops box is as good as you're going to get in terms of Harlequin bits and spares. Though maybe for a bit of variety, you could mix it up with some Drakari witches. Maybe if you stretched a Harlequin's troops kit with some witches, you might be able to make a bunch of different looking Harlequins, just seeding in a few interesting weapons or head swaps, or using the witch bodies as a base for making more Harlequin troops. Finally, let's go through the rest of the Xenos. Tyranids do tend to be a bit more individual, big bogs that make one of two different options, though having a quite a lot of dual kits does mean that there could be some leftovers. You could get quite a lot of fun tentacles left over if you build some Neurothropes out of the Venomthrope kit. For actually usable weapon options, maybe things like Carnifexes and Hive Tyrants are somewhat interchangeable with the different guns they bring. And Tyranid Warriors with quite a lot of options also will likely leave you with a few interesting spares. For the Gene Stealer Cult, their Acolyte Hybrids are really quite expensive per model and per point, but the actual kit that you get for them really does feel like quite a premium one. They've got a ton of different heads available, really quite a lot of weapon options, and the bits to make their various different bits of mining equipment, and there are likely going to be a few bits that you could see throughout the rest of the army if you want to make some seriously twisted models. If you're looking to do some acolytes on the cheap though, you could think about combining some guardsman parts with some gene stealer bits. This was how I made up quite a big horde of gene stealer cult acolytes to play. I used quite a lot of old eBay'd Cajuns, and had some nice bloody looking fresh rending claws bursting out from them from alarming places, and they were quite a fun project to make. Could be an option if you want to rustle up a bunch of these, and you don't want to be shelling out something like £5 per model. For the Tau, kits don't really tend to get more modular than the Crisis suits. The kits available in the start collecting box, you get a ton of drones that can make the various different drone options, and you'll have a pretty good selection of weapons left over after you've made the unit. Perhaps out of all the armies, Tau are one of the ones that are easier suited to magnetising as well with their weapons and support systems all mounted on hard points, so you can get quite a lot of extra value out of them being able to chop and change if you do a bit of prep work. The Necrons unfortunately have quite a lot of mono build kits, maybe not all that many bits left over, and perhaps for a winner out of the ones that leave you with the most fun spares might be the Lich Guard and Triarch Praetorians kit. You'll either have some Rods of the Covenant or some nice Dispersion and Shields left over, which could be fun for some other conversions. There seem to be a few at least relatively common conversions as well for the Necrons. When Indomitus came out, I saw quite a lot of people transforming their reanimators into Canoptic Spiders. I'm sure if you gave that a Google, quite a lot of guides would come up. 
or chopping and changing the readily cheap and available warriors into be a different form of flayed one with a few extra blades for them somewhere, particularly as the actual flayed one sculpts, while being really quite nice ones, are very expensive on a model per model basis, particularly as you might want quite a few of them. Finally, last but not least, if there's ever an army that's going to get a lot of value out of spares and kit bashing things, it'll be the orcs, with so many of their vehicles and weapons being somewhat ramshackle or cobbled together. Chopping and changing pieces tends to look very natural, and there's a lot of scope from converting bits out of other things, whether that's guns or entire models. The boys kit does seem like quite a good start, though as we know that will be changing at some point in the near future. Games Workshop has already shown off one of those new boys to us on Warhammer Community. The often discounted knobs kit is quite good as well though. It gives you a pretty decent variety of various different combi weapons. You've got combi scorchers, kill saw arms, big choppers and power claws, all of which are maybe a bit more interesting and detailed compared with the standard boys kit. The looters and burners kit can also be a good one of one that you can stretch. The kit will give you arms for both looters and burners, so if you combine that with some new boys, then it means that you can make more orky elites. Finally, talking of conversions, there's a good scope for cobbling together entire vehicles or running things as stand-ins. Games Workshop might be very keen to limit the use of looted wagons or things like that, but provided some sort of looted vehicle is pretty similar in size to a battle wagon, a lot of people I'm sure would love to see that, and certain smaller things like mech guns can literally be cobbled together from scraps. Here's a couple of my own mech guns I made out of some plastic hard tubing and some spare Gretchen. Maybe not quite as awesome looking as the kit that they actually sell, but they were great fun to make and they were made at a tiny fraction of the cost. So that just about brings us to the end of looking through 40k kits for bits and spares. As I said at the start, if you've got any other insights for your own army, please let us know down in the comments below. I'm sure there's a ton of cool options that I've completely missed, so I'll look forward to having a read. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. I'll certainly keep the 40k videos coming, though more usually focused on in-game tactics. Finally, if you'd like to help support the channel, I would just like to mention one way that you can do so, which is my Element Games affiliate link down in the video description. Element Games is a UK-based discount retailer. They usually give 10-20% off Games Workshop's models, so if you are thinking about buying any in the near future, you could consider clicking the link, buying through them, and then a small amount of money goes to help support Allspets Tactics, and it doesn't cost you any more whatsoever when you pay. It can just be a way to help the channel out if you are thinking about buying something anyway. For people over in the USA and Canada, I do also have an Amazon link as well, that's also in the video description. It works in basically the exact same way. Click it, buy literally anything off Amazon, and a small amount goes to help support the channel. It can just be a way to help out if you were thinking about buying something anyway. In any case, an absolutely enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.